wankers at Ohio State University have 150 diversity officers. 150. What's the thought process here? I mean, after the first 100 couldn't get the job done, you just decided, hey, what the hell, let's hire 50 more? I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and stick your buck nuts when the sun don't shine. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness of packing kids with classrooms and college campuses around the world. I am justifiably angry at The Ohio State University, the, the flagship university of the state I grew up in. What do you think you're doing? 150 diversity officers on staff. Dozens of new woke professors are being hired. At least 50 social justice, profiers, uh, social justice professors are about to be hired. Can't you, can't you just go back to overpaying college coaches? Can, can't you just go back to overpaying for college coaches? Please? Well, at the Ohio State. <laughs> University, I'm going to never they, get done mocking them for that one. They should be mocked. They should. Uh, as you said, they're going to be going up to, well, actually, they're going to be going higher than the 150 because they currently have the 150. That's just officers. That yeah, are, that's the diversity officials. Yep. Right? And it only costs $12 million 12 every single million. year. You $12 could million, get, just $12 million. You could get Chunk change. You could get two Urban Myers for that money <laughs> and two more national titles instead of being the laughing stock of the Big Ten and college educators all across. 150 and diversity administrators making a $12 million. And what I said at the beginning is exactly true. Did, did, you, did the 50, 50 weren't enough? So you doubled it? And then 100, 100 diversity officers couldn't get the job done. So you hired a 50 more of them? Well, now it's 50 professors. Well, on top of the On top of the yeah. 150. So, I mean, if you want to go home, you're a professor. You could go no. home. Because the only professors who are being hired, 50 more, was critical race theory. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Radical mm -mm. critical race theory professors, social justice <laughs> professors. That ain't me. Oh, no, no, that ain't me. <laughs> so they are going to hire 50 faculty members focused, focused on addressing social equity and racial disparities. Okay, so uh, in a 2021 State of the University address, President Christina Johnson. And there's part of your problem right there. You can call it sexist all you want. Oh, but you I put might. a chick in Bro. charge of the school and everything becomes diversity Ooh, everything i mean it, tea time you know, <laughs> we're not going down that road uh, the road i've just our, come back and i'm about ready to leave okay anyway the road is marked and paved as johnson stated at least 50 of our rays r-a-i-s-c it's an acronym whatever faculty will be scientists artists and scholars whose work addresses social equity and racial disparities in fields such as healthcare, education Justice and public safety, uh, resources and the environment, the arts and creative expression, economic opportunity and leadership, all these things, red flags, red flags, should be going off. But anyway, building on what is already world-class scholarship across our colleges. So we're already, already at world-class status, but now... Because of these five, 50, 50, 50, 50 faculty being added well, for, to focus on this... In, We're going to be in, like universe in typical class. In a typical female way, she forgets the difference between when she wants to spend money. Suddenly, 50 goes to 100, right? Okay. She was, she's going to hire 50. <laughs> and, and what did she say here? Uh, what did she say? I think he's hitting a personal she said, note with something happening at home. Not she with said, well, look, 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 this is what women do. Honey, no, can, I buy some. A, can, can I spend $50 on a shirt? Who wants to spend 50 two, two weeks this later, shirt? Two ninety nine. Two weeks maybe. later, the two dollars ninety nine cents. Two weeks later, the shirt shows up, and there's two of them. It's one hundred twelve dollars. <laughs> she said fifty. Now, right? And okay, at she least fifty. She also <laughs> added that the initiative would include a goal of hiring one hundred oh, yes. underrepresented black. See, honey, I got I got the black ones. They were two for a dollar. Mm. Give me a break with this. Known as the color of their skin is what makes them valuable. And then she says, very female sanctimoniously, quote, I want every single Ohio State student to be able to look across the lecture hall or exactly. seminar table and understand immediately that no white people will be allowed here ever again. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that's not what it says. That all students, except white ones, will be, a be, <laughs> be are able to dream and have valid dreams and achieve. Yeah, right. For those of you only listening at home and not visually seeing him say these, <sighs> not the white ones, he was 
That is not part of the actual quote. This is quote. a Bill Burr comedy <laughs> sketch. <laughs> this is this a is, Bill, Can you Bill imagine Burr. Bill Burr? What's going on at Ohio State? <laughs> What's going on? Leave it to Bill Burr to do that. Anyway, back to your Ohio State. Um, this RAISE initiative, the R-A-I-S-E initiative, is part of a larger plan to hire a total of, <laughs> we're just going to keep climbing. 50, 100, 100. 150, oh. rough, roughly 350 tenure track. Hey, yes. tenure track. You could be back on tenure track here mm. in the coming years. Yes. So 50 becomes 100, 100 becomes 350. 50. It's called the female economy, like my friends. <sighs> well, after that little moment, I guess we're going to move on from the Ohio State where Dr. Duke moved on from as well, um, to the University of Nevada. We'll head out west where you're not allowed, if you are white, mm. to live in a black dorm. Now, this is actually factual, unlike your quote from before about Bill Burr here. But the University of Nevada, Reno, has segregated their dorms. And uh, white students are not allowed to fill the open spots, quote, for the safety of student participants, end quote. And uh, they basically, the way they're saying this is on their website, they have three minority specific, minority only, if you will, living learning communities. This is basically where uh, you go to college and you decide we're going to all live together in the same dorm on the same floor. And we're going to kind of basically have a lot of classes together and we're going to have mentors so or stop call- do- whatever. Stop calling it minority then because you just give them, they are a majority. They are not just a majority. They are the only ones allowed in those dorms. In, in this, it's a, like a specific grouping floor part of the. Yeah, it's all in the same so big dorm in, building. In those contexts, they are not majorities. Mm-hmm. They are discriminating. They are not minorities. They are discriminating majorities. They have all that, pay, that space to themselves, and they are under no obligation to diversify it. Well, yeah, it depends on how you look at it. Now, these three minority-only uh, living communities are the Latinx or Latinx, Latinx. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but Hispanic Latinx, whatever. People. Indigenous and quote black scholars, and wow. that's what it's called. What's fascinating is the website actually specifically states that these living learning communities, all of them, have named themselves. So, ah. black scholars is named go. itself. Okay. So uh, what, the Crips, there, and, the, Crips <laughs> and the Bloods were there you copyrighted? Go. Now, there are 14 in total, so three of the 14 are narrowed out for these minority-only. Here's what's interesting to me. When you look at all 14, there's one that is a journalism group, which tells you everything you need to know about journalism these days because they have to have their own living learning community. The Gender Sexuality Identity Group. I, I don't know what qualifies to get in that one. Uh, and the women in science and engineering. Okay, so that already you're taking up almost half of the 14 of just being purely BS made up things to get people to segregate, like self-segregate then uh, and not be willing and open to diversify with the people like anyone else who has to live in a dorm. So in LLC, I already kind of said their communities and they they get together. Now, according to the university, the way they pitch it to the kids is this experience of them living and learning together is considered a high impact practice. And it, apparently by doing living together, they're going to get higher GPAs and they're going to be better citizens. And if you did this exactly the opposite with white kids yes. and you pointed out by white kids sharing dorms only with themselves, having all of these resources, all of this attention brought to bear on just white communal education, those kids would be doing much better too. And you would call that white privilege, wouldn't you? Oh, so what mm-hmm. this is is black or Latinx <laughs> or black scholar privilege. Quit pretending now. I mean, you, you've you already decided in your mind it's morally okay to discriminate. Mm-hmm. So call this what it is, right? This is literally black privilege. This is Latinx privilege. You know what I would do if I were a young buck? Since, since the, I would have to leave Ohio State for their stupidity. If I was a young buck looking for a college, I might go to the University of uh, Nevada Reed. And what I might do is I might rent a school bus park it outside this building and have white people only in the back seats. And I would go to the cafeteria and I would put signs up that says only for black students and have white people eat in the back. And you know, I don't think people would really get all that mad about it. Well, there's, we'll have a special where Dr. Duke goes on site and conducts these man experiments. On the yeah, man on the street. I'm, I'm young thing. enough looking, aren't I? I could pass for a college No, kid. not in the least. Now, this uh, being in Nevada, 
as you're saying, you should call a spade a spade, but they're not doing that. Racist. <laughs> um, well, you know, spades. Call a shovel a shovel. Yeah, that too. But yeah. I like to think of spade as well because of Nevada gambling. So what, I took what, it to a whole other spade. What have you got Get against it? David Spade? <laughs> Dude, he's short like me. Now, anyway, um, a qu- you have to ask yourself, what does it take to get into this? These various living, learning communities. Oh, 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 ooh, Mr. Cater. You got to be Latin or black. Ooh, Mr. Or indigenous. Uh, or indigenous. Now, according to... You just got to have the right skin color, right? According to their website, though, the uh, requirements for these identity-based mm. ones, the Young America's Foundation asks them. They took the time to yeah. be like, um, just like you did. What's a requirement? And according to the executive director of residential life, housing, and food services, Dean Kennedy, he said, in the identity-based communities, for the safety, as we Mm. indicated before, safety of student participants, it's important only students who hold that identity are considered. Explain, Explain the security threat. (laughs) <laughs> what what is the danger to these kids if they actually have to mingle with white people? What is the danger? They might actually what? Open their eyes Start and dancing learn. badly. <laughs> there you go. What's but gonna happen? what's what's inc- important to note that these LLCs, according to their website, stating specifically that these LLCs get additional resources, yep. support, yep. and enhanced yep. activities centered around a specific focus in order to elevate their wolf pack experience. So wolf pack. there you go. So they're announcing it. <laughs> white people. What they're telling you now is the presence of white people is da- as a dangerous threat to these. Mm-hmm. So why are you allowing white kids on campus? Period. Why? Because you need somebody to pay for these programs. If the if, if you got your wish and didn't take any white kids, then who would pay for this nonsense? N- now there's an important update to this. Yes, update. Dean Kennedy messed up just slightly. Did he? In that little statement, he. So there's an update. But that's okay. Uh, now the claim of both the black, Latinx, and the indigenous dorm communities are open to any and all oh, students. Because the hit, Dean, the, like, he misspoke. As they, they say he misspoke when he originally said that only students who hold that identity are considered. Yeah, so the fecal matter Whoops. hit the bivariate. What do we call that? What a, uh, the, the fecal oscillating, matter hit the oscillating, oscillating air current machine. And so Dean Kennedy now has to walk back his statement. But guess what hasn't been walked back? The segregation and all the extra money that goes to segregation. Way to go, Nevada. We're taking us back to the 1850s. Here in America, from sea to shining sea, we have diversity so much that you get one viewpoint. One, at the University of Oklahoma. You must have one viewpoint, and it's uh, being mandated through their diversity training at the University of Oklahoma, where students are being forced, as well as faculty members, to uh, say that they agree with political statements that are preferred by the school, of course. So it is okay. That's my creepy wink when I'm forced to wink. Uh, It is okay to diversify to just one viewpoint. Easy on the wink. That's how you got pregnant. Is it? Well, you don't know oh. much about, about you knew the first biology. Week, you knew that, the, uh, the first week not back, I, how. I had that. Say, I've been saving that for weeks. But yeah, this is what they mean by diversity at the University of Oklahoma. You will take my opinion about race. I'm your administrator, and you will repeat it. And if you don't repeat it, you're all in trouble. And if you do repeat it, then you're okay. So we have litmus tests. We now have Soviet-style litmus tests about how you can survive. And again, this is not the University of Massachusetts. This is not Los Angeles. This is not uh, the, the great Harvard, the great Ivy League schools. This is Oklahoma. I taught in Oklahoma State for a while. I know. So in Oklahoma, Oklahoma University is probably the most liberal thing in the whole state. And yet still... You couldn't get away with this kind of stuff at Harvard, where you were the only in diversity training. We're going to tell you right now that the, the training consists of you agreeing with whatever we say, however we say it. Yeah, so they have to take this training in the foundation uh, for individual rights in education, FIRE. We've talked about them many times. They actually took a look into this training and what was happening. Um, and so it's you're required to do the training and they have to answer questions in such a way that it's like there's only one right answer. But when we're talking about like, obviously they're all opinions. So opinions are supposed to differ. But if you don't choose the right one, then uh, fail. 
Come again. Yeah, I'm dealing with my lawyers. <laughs> Try one right. more time. <laughs> I'm dealing with my, a law firm down in Milwaukee now because our chancellor decided, at my university decided to give us a, a spontaneous race training, right? That there was, <laughs> Spontane- there was the, they called it well, that? It, no, he didn't call it that. When, uh, the, when Jacob Blake was shot uh, six months ago down in Milwaukee, eight, six, seven months ago, uh, he was so angry, the chancellor, that he just didn't threw a, a training at us. Now, this is interesting because the training was not system-wide. He just wants to show his bona fides, right? So he gives us this training, and me and another professor, we sat down and going through them together, and we decided, you know, we'll, we'll do this training until we they start making us agree to their opinions. Aha. So the training began, like, when the very first slide, they, had, they said something about race, and they said, do you disagree or agree? We disagreed. And Those then, were your only options. Then, agree, disagree, then, boom. Okay. Well, th- then we got a note that said, please reconsider. <laughs> And I didn't reconsider. We moved so as long as they let us Please reconsider, reconsider, then after about 10 slides, we were no longer allowed to reconsider. <laughs> we were not allowed to move forward until we agreed with them. We stopped working then. And oh so my. right now we're putting together a legal response to why we're not going to finish this for these very same reasons. That's fantastic. Well, in their example... Um it, it was a hypothetical situation they put out for the question. Uh, students were required to communicate with a fictional colleague named Michael, or is it Michael or Michelle? I don't know gendered. how it's, but it's Michael, standard spelling. Okay, it showed a video of Michael saying that he was tired of all this transgender stuff. Oh, that's why. My, you could pick the white, whitest name you could come up with. Michael. I gotcha. So Michael's like, I'm tired. The quote is, tired of all this transgender stuff. And then the students had to select a response. Not like they could give their own opinion. They had to select one of them. When one student selected the response that she felt was most similar to her actual feelings, which was, I agree, political correctness can be so tiring. That's what she chose. She was told that her opinion was not the best choice. It was not the best choice. But it wasn't wasn't the only one. But the best option was, you seem upset. What's the matter? (laughs) Okay. But, but, But notice how they're implying that you have choice. Well, they're implying that you have, but yeah, you but can't you move really, forward. Exactly. That's right. Okay. Until you change your mind, and that's what happened to us. I was actually amused. The first couple of slides, it said, "Please cons- reconsider," and they Please. told us why, and we didn't reconsider. <laughs> but we got, and I could live with that because I'm a, I'm allowed to ignore their stupidity. It's true. And I read their propaganda. I nodded. I, I didn't agree, but I was allowed to move forward. That ended really quick. <laughs> Up quick and in a hurry. So, so Fire is saying, they actually wrote a letter to Oklahoma saying, okay, if you're going to have students do this, like you can't make this mandatory or you have to let them have their opinions. Like you can't have it both ways, right? That's exactly right. But they always want to have their cake and eat it too. Although cake has too many calories and a lot of these vegans don't eat anything. Because let's let's be honest. Anyway, moving on. So um, Fire Sabrina Kanza actually said, how this violates First Amendment. And that's obviously what FIRE is all about, is the First Amendment. And she said, at a public university, again, public university, requiring students and faculty to express agreement with the university's position, viewpoint, or values in this manner runs headlong into the First Amendment right against compelled speech. Uh, As the First Amendment protects not only the rights to speak, but also the right not to speak. So, yep. Yep. Mind blown. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, and by the way, my chancellor put this mandatory race training on the books because he was so infuriated it happened again. Turns out that we found out last week that there was no charges filed against the police officer. He was returned to duty. In other words, it was a justifiable shooting that Mr. Blake was in the wrong and what happened was within the boundaries of legitimate force. So do you think my chancellor is going to get back up on the news now and apologize for that? Because when he forced us into this training because of that shooting, it was under the implication that this black person was shot for no good reason. It's not true, Chancellor. I think not only should you drop the trace, race, race, the racial training that you forced on us because of that situation in your own words, and you should stop using your position to bully people into thinking what you think all the time. Time now for the continuation of Gulliver's Travel Week, the great travel novel of the the wonderful Jonathan Swift, the former dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in Ireland, just a great, one of the great minds of the 18th century and somebody who we don't read nearly enough today because he was uh, one of the, perhaps the single greatest 
satirist in the English language. He, don't forget he gave us a modest proposal. You may remember that, right? A savage account of why we should start eating Irish babies. Because, of course, they grow up to be worthless Irish people. And if we wanted to, to, to decrease the surplus population, what if we ate babies instead of chickens? It was wonderful. And, of course, the whole thing was satire. But it was written so deadpan that people thought he was serious, raised a firestorm in the 18th century, and taught us something about race and about uh, ethnicity really important. So here's what he says for today's episode of this about how we – we, what do we prioritize in the West? What do we prioritize? This is the 18th century. What do, we, what do we prioritize? He says, I replied that England, the dear place of my nativity, was computed to produce three times the quantity of food, more than its inhabitants are able to consume. That's a good thing. But in order to feed the luxury and intemperance of England's men and the vanity of England's females, we sent away the greatest part of our necessary things to other countries. From whence, in return, we brought the materials of diseases, folly, and vice to spend among ourselves. So we grew three times as much food as we needed, and we sold it all to what? To bring back silks and gold and, and trinkets and all sorts of things that lead to nothing but corruption. Hence, it follows of necessity that vast numbers of our people are compelled to seek their livelihood by begging, robbing, stealing, cheating, pimping, forswearing, flattering, suborning, forging, gaming, lying, fawning, hectoring, voting, scribbling, free thinking. What happened? You sold all the food to bring in delicates that only the rich people could afford. And then when the, the poor people had nothing to eat, they became criminals. That's the system of the West to this day, not because capitalism bad or free, free markets is bad, but because the vanity of the elite classes sacrifices what everybody needs for their own particular vanities. All right, just a quick reminder to please download our new Freedom Project Media app. We've got a lot of great content on there, including our 18 new shows every single week. All you have to do is search Freedom Project in your app store and make sure you allow for notifications. And if you're a fan of this show, please consider a one-time tax-deductible donation to support the Patriot Club, and we're going to send you, as a little thank you, our signature tumbler. Visit patriotclub.us to get signed up. That's patriotclub.us. Now we want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. And today we're giving a shout out to David from Birmingham, Great Britain, you say? David, are you one of the Peaky Blinders? <laughs> are you one of the... Don't mess with the Peaky Blinders. They're from Birmingham. Birmingham. Maybe, maybe he is. Well, it's... either way, David, if you're not a Peaky Blinder, thank you for supporting I wanna, us. I would like to thank you, David, for being a Peaky Blinder and standing by the show. And that wraps up the show for this week. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, don't mess with the Peaky Blinders, says Arthur.